Hello and welcome to another exciting Dazlite tutorial. I'm Simon Bennett and today we're going to be talking about controlling your show live. So I've got a demo show over here which I made earlier. We've got a few different uh, scenes and groups that I've created. So down here you see we've got some RGBs. The, these lights here, 8 RGBs and I've got some moving heads which are these guys just down here. And then up here we got some groups to control the beam. So we've got beam on, blackout, strobe. And we've got some colour effects as well, some gobos, some moves and some flashes. Uh, the flashes by the way, uh, these use flash buttons. That was this setting over here. So when you press the button they will come on and when you release the scene they will stop. So this is great for creating blinders and quick fire strobes and stuff like that. I've also got a reset all button here. Um, just a reminder, if you ever want to create a button that's going to release everything else in the show, basically you just need to set the release mode to general. So if a button has a general release mode, this is going to switch off all the other buttons in your entire show. So it's a great way just to reset everything. So today we're going to dive over to the live tab and I'm going to show you some different ways that you can control your show live. So as you've probably noticed, it's pretty similar to the editor tab. If we just go back here, the general scene view is almost exactly the same. What changes is this area on the right. So what we've got here is um, a live bar. Instead of seeing the scene properties and the scene steps, we have some live functions here. And we also have this master dimmer over here, which will dim all our lights in the show. But we'll come back to that in a few minutes. What I want to show you first is this area on the left. So by default, when you click a scene, it's going to play. You get a progress bar here so we can see how far along the scene we are and we have a few icons along the bottom which will tell us if we've got any properties set. For example this little icon here is going to tell us that we always loop the scene. We have three different view sizes so if I click this little arrow here it's going to go small. If I click this down arrow it's going to go to the medium view and, and if I click it again it's going to go to the large view. And in the large view we basically get a dimmer fader and a speed fader. So if I just show you an example, if I switch the lights on, I can dim them with this fader. See the lights dim there. And if I change the speed fader it's going to speed up the scene or slow it down. I'll show you with this rainbow scene here. So here we have a rainbow effect playing. And I can speed the scene up and slow it down. And if I double click one of these faders, it's going to reset it. So if I double click here, it's going to go back to the middle. So that's the basic uh, live view. Up here we've got the group controls. So pressing play will play the first scene within the group, like so. Pressing pause will pause whatever scenes are running within the group. So you see we've got the Knight Rider now that's been paused. And these two buttons here are going to allow you to jump to the previous or next scene within the group. So if I press this button, we go over to the rainbow, then the sparkles, and then the pink and blue. And you can basically use this button like a go button. So um, a lot of the traditional consoles, you might call a group a queue list. So you could have a queue list of scenes or a queue of scenes. And then you could have a big go button to jump to the next scene. I'll give you a quick example. Um, imagine we're using the show mode. So if I just add these four buttons to show mode, um, if you've not used show mode before, basically you just hold alt on PC or option on Mac and you click the scene and then they will appear on show mode which is basically our customized screen so we've got the Knight Rider the rainbow the sparkles and the pink and blue scene we can also edit this screen if we go over here 
we go into editor mode, we can drag these buttons around the screen, we can resize them. And what you can also do is create a new button. So if I go over here, create a new button. And this allows us to customize the behavior of the button. So if I just go down here where it says association, I'm going to edit this here. And I'm going to go scene groups. Let's say uh, color effects. And next scene. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to give this a custom name. I'm going to call it Go. OK, so I can put this Go button over here. I'll lock the screen again. And when I hit Go, as you see, it jumps to the next scene within the group. So this is a nice way of setting up a very simple queue. So for example, if you're a DJ and you're doing discos, you could create loads of different color effects for perhaps uh, different parts of the night or just for a variety of uh, different uh, effects and moods. And then you could have a nice big simple go button that you could click to jump between the effects. If you're using Dazlight for live shows, you could perhaps have a queue for a song which the band are playing and you could have a go button to jump to the next scene within that queue. So maybe you've got a scene for the chorus, a scene for the verse, a scene for the outro, etc, etc. And for theatres, you know, a go button could be used uh, within an act. So that's basically how you can jump between scenes. There's also an option to automatically jump between scenes. If we go over to the Edit tab, I can go to Knight Rider here and I can turn off Always Loop and use this Jump To button here. We did explain this in a previous tutorial but just to recap. And then I can either click Next Scene or I can go down here and I could jump to, for example, Sparkles. So if I do this and press OK, let's go back to the live screen. I'm going to click Knight Rider, it's going to play once, and then it's going to jump over to the sparkles. So there are many different ways to kind of jump around your show, jump between scenes and have uh, scenes recall themselves automatically. There's also this master jump. This will basically jump all scenes within the show. So you see we've got on and sparkles running at the moment. If I press this, it's going to jump both scenes. So now we've got blackout and pink and blue. Notice that I've only programmed the blackout to work on the moving heads. This is why the moving heads are black and the RGBs are still pink and blue. So let's dive over to this section on the right and let's just see what we've got here. Um, so we've got the master dimmer, which is going to dim all our lights. Nice quick way to control your lights. We've got the pause button. This is going to pause all the scenes running in the show. So if I just go back over here and select a rainbow effect, for example, if I imagine you've got a circle effect playing at the same time, if I press pause here, it's basically just going to pause all the scenes. And we can tell the paused because all these progress bars have frozen over here. What we've got here is a master blackout. That's going to black everything out. And then if I click it again, it's going to bring everything back in. This enables fading. Um, this is like a global fade. So basically when this is checked, it's going to fade between scenes if you've got a scene fade time checked. And if it's released, so if it's black, it's going to ignore all the fading between the scenes. So if you just want to temporarily disable fading between scenes, this is the button you want to be pressing here. Then over here we've got a lock button. So obviously this is going to lock your screen. It's going to allow you to set a password. So imagine you're doing a show within a public environment or you know, imagine you're doing a disco. You don't want anybody touching your lighting and you need to head away for a second. Um, this is a nice quick way to just lock the software. 
It's also great for uh, installations as well. If you're using Daslight in a club install, it's a nice quick way to lock the software so only the light jockey or the club manager has access to the software. In fact, if it was one of my installs, I wouldn't give the club manager access to the software, but uh, I would only give the programmer access to the software. But anyway, yeah, that's a lot button. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about live edits in Daslight. So what is a live edit? Well, a live edit is an edit you make in live. For example, we can switch the beam on here and we can make a rainbow here. Now imagine I want a gobo on these moving heads. I don't have any gobos programmed other than this star gobo over here, but I don't want the star gobo. In fact, I want, let's say, this gobo of a line here. So what I can do, I can select my moving heads like I have done here, and I can click this line. And as you can see, this has turned into a line. Now, up here we see this, LTP. Now notice here, these are either on, if the channel's included within the scene, they're off if the channel's not been used within the scene. But over here we got LTP and this means latest takes priority. So this button here, latest takes priority, basically means that the fader is always going to take priority over any scenes that you've previously clicked on. So here we've got this line taking priority over the previous open gobo that was running. And there are some different modes, there's highest takes priority as well, so if I click this again, it's going to go to HTP, and that'll mean that if this channel's used in one of these scenes, which it isn't in this, but if it was used in one of the scenes, the highest value would always take priority. So the highest value out of the fader, or the value that was programmed previously in the scene. Um, it's only useful in a few specific circumstances, so I wouldn't worry too much about this HTP. If you wanted to go back to a previous lock, so for example, this originally was an open gobo, but right now we've got a line gobo, I can just click this again, and this goes back to its previous state, which was off, because it wasn't used in any of the scenes. So that's basically how you create overrides, and it doesn't just have to be uh, some gobos, you could have some gobo rotation. So you see now we have this rotating line. If I decide I don't want the rotating line, again, I can go back to the original state, which was no rotation. And if I decide I don't want this gobo, I can switch this off like so. There are other ways to reset live edits as well, because imagine I've made loads of live edits. Imagine I've put this on, then I've put the gobo rotation. Maybe I've got, uh, oh, what else have we got on this light? We've got a prism. Maybe we've got a prism enabled as well. So if I put a three facet prism on here, we can't actually see this in the little preview, but basically I've made all these different changes if we go over to the fader tab, we can see them a little easier. So you see we've got an LTP edit on the gobo channel, the gobo rotation channel, the prism channel. We've been overriding these scenes. It's all started to get a bit messy. Now imagine I just want to reset back to how it was before I made all these changes. That's basically what this section's about up here. So if I click this reset all button, everything resets back to its original state. And there's a couple of other reset buttons here. This resets all the lights in the selected family. So if I give you a quick example, let's, uh, let's, let's change these colors. So I'm going to override these values. I'm going to set a static color. Then if I go over to the RGB lights, I'm going to override this as well. I'm going to go like this. Okay, so now as you see, although we've got a rainbow effect playing, the RGBs are static pink and the moving heads are static green. Now, if I go reset family, so I could select the moving head family. I can then go reset family. 
that's going to reset all these moving heads. So they're back doing what they've been programmed to do, and that's to play a rainbow effect. But as you see, these RGBs are still pink because I've not reset any of these RGBs yet. So if I just go over to these RGBs, let's make a selection. So I could select these two RGBs, for example. And if I go reset selection here, this is basically just going to reset the lights I've selected. So you see now these have been reset, they're back to playing the rainbow effect. These have been reset, they're back to playing the rainbow effect. But these ones here are still pink because I've not reset them. And then maybe at some point I want to reset everything. So I'll just click this reset all button and everything will reset. So this is a nice, really quick, easy way to quickly create a load of edits on top of your program show over here and then just revert back to what was going on before. So that's the live edits. And the next thing I want to show you is the snapshots. So in DVC3 in earlier versions, we used to have the effects. Now we don't have effects anymore in Daslight 4. Instead, we have these little snapshot buttons over here. And this basically allows you to take a snapshot of everything you see and save it into a new scene. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, if we go back over to these movers, Imagine we want another gobo that's not the open gobo and that's not the star gobo. Imagine we want a line gobo, for example. So if I go over to palette, I'm going to select the line gobo. And what I can do is I can save this. I can save this line gobo into a new scene. Now there are two snapshot buttons here. The first snapshot button will take a snapshot of everything we see. So it's going to store like this color of the RGBs, it's going to store this gobo, it's going to store everything. But we don't want to do that, we just want to store this little live edit that we've made. Therefore we need to click this one, and this is a live edit snapshot. So this is a snapshot that's only going to store your live edits, so your LTP live edits. So if I click this button here, it's added a new scene to my Gobos group because this is the group that was selected. If I reset all, so I'm going to clear all my live edits. Then if I go back and I click scene, there we go. Here's my Gobo on top of this. And if I release this, it's back to how it was before. So now that live edit's been stored in a brand new scene. Um, a situation where you might want to use this, so like a global snapshot, is if you've been setting your lights up, you've been using them for a while, and then you look up and you say, wow, you know, this looks great, and I want to take a quick snapshot of it. We can basically select a group first. I'm just going to put it in the flashes group for now. I'm going to take a snapshot like so. So we see this new scene over here. And if I switch these off and then click this. Now we've got a live static snapshot. So that's live edits and you know do drop us a post on our forums or drop us an email if you've got any questions about the live edits. Uh, they really are powerful. It's something that you might not use when you first start using Daz Light, but you'll quickly find them really useful especially if you're doing live shows and you need to be editing stuff on the fly. Okay, so the next feature I want to show you is blind mode. Basically, blind mode allows you to edit your show live without outputting your edits. So this is great if you need to go back and make a quick change to a scene, or if you want to create a new scene, but you don't want your audience to see it until you're ready. So for example, imagine we wanted to add a new gobo on these moving heads. Imagine we wanted to add this circle gobo here, and we wanted this in a little scene here. What we can do is, we can go up to edit, and we can select blind editing. So nothing changes here. Now we're going to dive over to edit. And basically, what's happened now is, if I create a new scene, all my lights have gone off, but in live, everything's still going. And I'm just going to open the 3D visualizer so we can see this. As you see here, the rainbow is still playing in live, even though the fixture window is only showing us the selected step, the selected scene. 
So if I go ahead and put this circle gobo on, go over to live, and then if I click scene two, here's my circle gobo, all ready to go. So that's blind editing, and blind editing is a really useful feature in Dazlite 4. So that pretty much sums up the live tutorial. What we're going to do next is jump into show mode and I'm going to show you how you can create your own customized screen. If you remember, we did start before with these simple rainbow, night rider, sparkle and a go button that we made. So we're going to jump in and see what else we can do with show mode and see how we can connect our smartphones and tablets to remotely control Dazlite over a Wi-Fi network. 